Yo, yo, what's up, aliens? Ahi here, and I'm super excited to share with y'all that I have a new eight track EP that is out on Circus Records uh, this last week. It's called Future Escape. Please, if you enjoy my music, if you enjoy my tutorials, uh, if you want to support me, definitely go give it a listen on whatever streaming platform or buy it. Yeah, I'd super appreciate that. By the way, my EP will be linked below in the description. So go check that out at the end of this video. Let's get into it. I'm going to go through and I'm going to show y'all today how I do my side chaining because a few of y'all have asked about that. I know this is a topic that's been covered by a bunch of people and it, and it can be done in a several different ways. I just want to show y'all how I do it and it's just sort of my thoughts around maybe some of the ways that I go about doing mine. And then also I think I have a few interesting unique things to add to the conversation about side chaining. So first let me show you my settings real quick and then we'll get into why I do the things that I do. First off, you can see uh, I've got the ratio all the way up. I've got the uh, threshold all the way down, which y'all are probably used to seeing it in this view. Um, and I have the attack all the way down and then the release around this section right here. I don't have the makeup on. Uh, obviously, I have the side chain on. You get to it by clicking this little uh, side arrow on the Ableton compressor. I've selected uh, a side chain kick. And that's important to note. I don't select the actual kick in my song. Um, and then here I turn on the EQ so that way I'm just listening to the 15,000 hertz and above. I've turned up the Q all the way. Um, and usually also I click this view. And you'll see why I click this view and why that's important here in a second. Here in my template I have uh, my sidechain triggers as their own group up here. And I trigger everything to a blip of white noise here. I'm going to unmute these so we can give it a listen. Incredible. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, it's just a little click. Um, it's just a piece of white noise and it's very, very short. And I'll tell you why it's so short here in a second. And also it's important to know that it's muted so that way you don't actually hear the click, but the signal still goes through the routing. And now you can see here, uh, I've, here, I guess uh, we'll, I'll play the drum rack and the uh, trigger together so you can see the kicks and the snares are lined up. Yes. So basically, I, I'm just emulating the kick and snare pattern with these. I could also do this with a, uh, a MIDI rack, you know, that's our sampler that's just playing this. And maybe that would be easier for some of y'all. I've just gotten in the habit of doing this here with audio. But yeah, but there's no correct way to go about doing a trigger. But um, I just happen to prefer audio. Now, why the blip is so short and has to do with being able to control the release so if i go to this top bass group this is one of the songs it's called losing control from the uh circus records ep play a little bit of the tune i like this view because you can actually see the ducking curve and then also why the white noise blip is so short is so that way I can then use the release to control how much side chaining is actually happening. So check this out if I was to up the release. And you see that's a little much. Uh, so I like to be able to control it and dial it back. So that way it's only really making space for the transient of the kick, which is the main part of the kick that I want to be knocking through the rest of the project. Now I'll show you why I sidechain it to a trigger. So if I was to sidechain this to say the actual kick in the song right here, uh, you'll see it's just It feels weird to me, you know, like you can see the shape that's different it's like taking out more uh, than the white noise blip and it feels like a more obvious sidechain and that's I don't want that I in this particular song I don't want the sidechain effect to be obvious I want it to be natural and subtle and 
functional. Let's give it an extended listen. Yeah, so that's sort of, it's sort of annoying every time the kick hits, at least for me. So if we go back to the side chain. It's so much smoother to me, and that's why I prefer to do it with this white noise trigger. And you'll see it is a, a very, very, very short blip of white noise there. So now I want to talk about specifically what I do and don't sidechain in a project. For this one, you can obviously see that I'm sidechaining the top bass group to both the kick and the snare, but that's not the case on everything. Like on this subgroup, I am only sidechaining the kick to the subgroup. And the reason why that is, I don't want my subs to disappear when the snare comes in. That could work on some other songs, but not this one. And so I didn't do it. Uh, another thing you'll see here is that the top drums for this track, they used to have side chains on them. I decided it sounded better without the side chaining on it. It sounded more natural uh, to have the cymbals and whatnot not be side chaining. Same goes here for the effects. I had some side chain on it. I decided to get rid of it. Obviously, also, the vocals have no side chaining on them. Now, here up in the chords, which uh, is like these melodies that uh, these melodies that happen it's high up in the frequency range and I didn't really feel like the kick needed to it didn't interfere with those frequencies of, of these melodies and so I decided I don't need it there um, and but the snare it is in that frequency range and so I decided I'll keep the side chain of the snare going to these things so that way we can get some more punch out of the snare and I just want to let you know that these specific choices were for this song it's not a I don't always do this for every song and um, it, it's about listening and figuring out whether or not your side chaining is right for this element in this particular song and I'll show you a few other examples let's get into it and while I'm waiting for this thing to load be sure to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already I'd super appreciate that all right let's get into this so this is another song of mine on the circus records EP it's called non-stop so loud so what I want to show you all specifically in this song is that yeah the uh, drop here goes along with the kick and snare <laughs> That's a fun one. Uh, but here on the build, I want to show y'all, I don't always have side chaining going on in the build, uh, but in this one, I do. I don't have side chaining in this section right here when the, uh, the kicks start to get really frequent. Uh, I just, I decided uh, that having them in there, the side chain effect was just too much and it just sounded weird and unnatural and that's not what I was going for in this song. And so I was just like, okay, let's get rid of the triggers. And so they are no longer there, uh, but still sounds good without them. So this, the idea sticks. So where do I have my side chaining routing on here? So here's this bass group, which uh, I have my sub... So in this particular song, because this is like a more almost like rhythm, but it's not, but it, it sort of is, uh, I, I take away the, uh, the bass on both the kick and the snare because it sounded good that way. Um, it was like that repeating pulse of it that just, it just went with the vibe. So I've got it there on the entire bass section. The top drums. Uh, I am also side chaining to both the kick and the snare in this particular case because of that pulsing I was talking about. And then here the effects is being side chained to the kick but not the snare. So, you know, it's a little bit different here. So something here on the chords group I want to show y'all is that I actually am using my multiband sidechain effect. Now what this does is that I've 
split the frequencies uh, into a high and low band. So, and then I have the side chain from the kick only affecting the low band and the side chain from the snare only affecting the high band. So this way it's a functional uh, side chaining. So that way the basses, the bass parts of this music section are only ducking to the kick and the top end of everything is only ducking to the snare. And you can get this uh, in my Magic Ableton racks. I think this one's in the volume two, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I like using this one. Sometimes I'll use it also on the bass groups for the same particular function, which, you know, I think that's sort of unique. I, I haven't heard too many people talk about that, of side chaining uh, the specific frequencies uh, uh, of different bands. Now, let me show you another example. Check this out. This is my remix of Conrank's Uba, which is also on the EP. And this one is a really bizarre track. So here, I'll play the second drop of this one. <laughs> So when I check the sidechain triggers group, there's nothing, nothing. There's no sidechaining going on in this song. Uh, none of the sidechain <laughs> compressors are doing anything. I think I just accidentally left that on there. So this goes to show that you don't need sidechaining in every song. I will say... Oftentimes you do, and in most cases you probably do for dance music, but uh, not always. Uh, if it sounds better without it, then it sounds better without it. Now, how I achieved this was I have these pretty short kicks, and everything is being really compressed. So if we look like at these bases here, the limiter is actually doing quite a bit of work there and so here check the pre-master that one's doing a lot of work and the master's doing a lot of work so this is a super compressed song and what it's sort of doing is that in all the frequencies fighting for space in uh the limiters and like how they're reacting to the uh, initial uh, uh, attack of the limiters, they're actually pushing each other in and out of s space there, which I sort of didn't realize that until afterward. I only figured that out through analyzing it, you know, trying to do this tutorial for y'all. And it's something I don't fully understand quite yet, but it, it made me sort of... Th this makes me think about it more because when I was dissecting the Skrillex track, I saw he did use sidechain, but also I saw that he routed his uh, subs to be the most compressed channel. So like he had all these like layers of limiters. And so like each layer of limiting is going to obviously add more limiting the further down the chain that you go. And I think I want to do a tutorial on this at some point, but I need to understand it more and, and really put it into practice and not accidentally do it like I did here uh, before I can really explain it to y'all more clearly. But also, if you're, I did recreate uh, Skrillex's uh, Ableton template, uh, and that's part of my Magic Ableton templates, which I'll put a link below for that as well if that's something you're interested in. Uh, it's got three different templates. It's got my template in there, and uh, it's called the OG template. Uh, the alien template is uh, Skrillex's, and then there's a hybrid, which is like a mixture of the two. And I should go through and uh, describe some of those at some point as well. But yeah, also, I, I just want to touch on that some people, they uh, route everything to a single group and sidechain that entire group. Uh, I've, I've seen people do that, uh, particularly for drum and bass and dubstep, and you could totally do that. I've seen great songs made that way. Um, I, for one, want to... N I, I, I am not in the you-have-to-sidechain-everything camp. Uh, obviously, this is a song that's like... It's somewhere between drum and bass and dubstep. It's d drum and bass at 160. Um, but... Um, it works. It works really well. Uh, and it has no side chaining on it. So I just want to let you know that you can break every rule out there. But also, it's good to know the rules. So that way, 
uh, you you know how to break them, not just being like, oh, I'm breaking the rules, but you have no idea what you're doing. Um, I had no, actually, actually, I realized I sort of had no idea what I'm doing <laughs> uh, in this particular track, but it sounded good. So I guess, yeah, that's the number one thing. If it sounds good, it is good. And that, Aliens, is my spiel on sidechain compression. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe. Maybe share this with another producer friend of yours. Also, while I have you here, I talk about my magic racks in everything. Definitely, uh, is, this is going to be a really exciting week. I'm going to be coming out with my magic racks volume three. It's going to have 20 new racks that uh, has a bit more of my expertise and time into each one of these racks. Uh, I just sort of took a look at like what structures and what uh, effects, uh, like effects groups that I was making consistently. And I was just like, okay, I'm just going to make these into a rack. So that way it'll save me time. It'll save y'all time. You just throw it on and it works. Uh, I, I haven't publicly shown any, any of them, but I'll provide a link below of where y'all can get that on my Gumroad. Please, once again, at the end of this, uh, please go check out my uh, new EP that came out on Circus Records this last week. It's called Future Escape. It's got eight tracks. I'd really love to know what y'all think of it, so maybe leave a comment below. And um, yeah, I will see y'all in the future. Bye. Peace, aliens. <laughs>